Hello, if you're watching this video, it's because I'm assuming you're looking to purchase your very first E30. So I'd like to be the first one to welcome you to the E30 family. What I wanted to do today is put together somewhat of a guide to be able to steer you in the right direction if you are looking to purchase your first E30 and you're not exactly sure where to turn. Now, I've been in the E30 game for a little under a decade now. So I have an idea of the things that you should look for when in search of purchasing an E30. This is my 1990 325i Cabriolet finished in glacier blue metallic. I purchased it in April of 2016 after it sat for over a decade in storage. It came from Florida, so I was lucky that the exterior and interior are in a relatively good condition. Now, I would say the first concern when you're looking at an E30 would be rust, just because of the age of the vehicles. And honestly, E30s were really good driver's cars. Uh, people, even well after they were 20 years old, people still use these as dailies. Uh, and especially in the Northern states, you can have a lot of rust issues if you don't know where to look. A good place to first start looking is this pinch well to make sure that they're not all crushed or not all rusty. Now on my E30, I have a little bit of rust here in the rear apron area, but I'm not really too concerned about it because this is the only area of rust on the whole car. Now another good area to check would be in your spear, spare wheel well. Uh, I'm not going to lift it up, obviously I have a lot of junk back here. Uh, but you can see where a lot of them will start rusting out there. So it's a really good place to check if you're looking. Um, a buyer should be completely understanding if you want to pull up this carpet and look underneath. Of course, always check your wheel arches. Make sure that these are good. Give it a little feel around. And that it's not crusty or bubbly. And that you don't feel anything hidden behind. Now specifically, if you're looking at a convertible model, the convertibles have the battery under the hood where the coupes and sedans and M3s will have it in the rear. So a uh, really good place to look is your battery tray. You can see it's rusty, but it's not rusted through or anything. I just would need to clean it up and paint it. So this is not bad, but this is on convertibles. One of the first areas that'll rust and it'll tell you a lot about the car because if the car was not taken care of, the, typically the batteries were old, seeped acid on and they'll start rusting out. And they'll actually rust out from here and kind of get cancerous all up in here. So that's a really good indication of the quality of the body of the car. And if you're looking at an E30, that is the first thing that I would be concerned with is what condition that the body is in rust wise. Uh, because it can be quite an extensive repair to get the car back up to a standard of what you'd feel comfortable modding it or whatever. So first things first, check for rust, make sure that all the structural areas are great, the body's area are great. Um, I've seen where in the sunroof it starts to rust out because the drain plug for the sunroof is you know all plugged up and uh, so that's a good area. So if you see any rust up on the roof or any weird areas, I would definitely steer clear of cars with odd areas of rust. But it's also important to remember that there's a large aftermarket for E30s. So they sell aftermarket body panels, floor pans, all of that. So if you're a really good DIYer or you know somebody who's a body guy and you feel confident that you can fix it, don't let that completely sway your decision, but just make sure you know what yourself you're getting yourself into. If you are looking at a car that comes with the inline six, otherwise known as the M20, there is a very important thing that we need to talk about, and that is the timing belt. You see, the M20 is an exceptionally strong and reliable engine. It will last 400 to 500,000 miles without needing a lot of maintenance. But there is one weak point, and it's the fact that BMW put a timing belt into these that need to be replaced every 50 to 75,000 miles, or if not by mileage, you're just looking at age, approximately every five years. And you can see that while it's not completely cramped, that there still isn't a lot of room to be able to take and, and work on it and do a timing belt yourself. Now, you can. I haven't done it on this one. Um, it needs to be done yet. But just be aware that if you don't feel confident doing a timing belt and they don't have evidence that one has been done on one that you're looking to purchase, understand that it is probably going to need to be done and that can be upwards of $1,000 to have that done and it will need to be done. It is absolutely crucial on an E30 that you know where your timing belt is and its life cycle. Though M20s are quite readily available and pretty cheap, 
it is far more of a pain to install an entire new engine than just changing your timing belt. And if you go onto a company like FCP Hero, you can buy an entire timing belt kit for like $300. And if you have the tools, it'll take you up three or four hours to do it. And if you've done timing belts before, um, you could probably get in and out in under two hours. So next to rust, your timing belt is the second most important thing that you should be looking for on any prospective E30 purchase. However, that does not include the 318 as that came with a four cylinder M42 engine which has a timing chain. So now the third most important thing that you need to be aware of on an E30 purchase is the cooling system. If you've had any experience with BMWs prior or if you watched any other videos on purchasing BMWs in general, everybody knows that the cooling system is definitely a big issue with all BMWs from any generation. We do get lucky on the E30 platform as a lot of the stuff is still metal and it is not even close to as bad as the 90s and early 2000s models, which were mostly made of plastic and are complicated, have lots of issues. But we still need to be worried about what shape our cooling system is in. The things that we need to be worried about on the E30 are our water pump, uh, because, well, it's a European car and all European cars are known for water pump failures around 80,000 to 100,000 miles, but also everything else that's made of rubber and plastic in here because as I said before, these cars are at a minimum 30 years old. So our rubber components, our plastic components are old. They're getting brittle, fragile. Um, if you look at your rubber, you'll if it's starting to fail, you'll see it balloon. But if you're purchasing an E30 and you see that these are the original hoses, or if you ask the owner if they replaced them, the answer is no. I would say that you should just go ahead and budget out probably $100 to $150 um, to purchase brand new urethane hoses. It'll update the look and you know that you won't have any reliability issues down the road. The radiator, however, it's just metal. So just check your condition on that. And if there is nothing wrong with it, then you have nothing to worry about. Now running down the list, the fourth most important thing to look at on any E30 purchase would be your suspension components. Now, just as I've stated on your cooling system, all your suspension components are gonna be at least 30 years old. And if they haven't been replaced at least once already, get ready to actually spend some time and some money replacing everything on your suspension. It's like I've been saying, everything on the car is 30 plus years old and your bushings are made of rubber. And the steering feel on an E30 should be real tight and real nimble, um, kind of a lot like a Miata. So on any E30 that you're looking at purchasing, take it for a test drive and make sure that the suspension isn't clunking any making noise, any squeaks, and that it should feel tight. And if it's none of those things, you need to ask that owner if they did any suspension work. And if the answer is no, don't be scared because once again, the E30 is an extremely popular platform and stuff is completely available anywhere, especially suspension components because these are very popular cars for the racetrack. So you can pick up suspension components for cheap and anywhere. But just remember that if it has not been done, you are going to have to do it. Another issue, but not a major one, is something called the center support bearing. BMW makes two piece drive shafts for these cars. So they need uh, a bearing that goes in the middle to support that two piece system. They fail uh, a lot just because of age or mileage. Um, it's not something that's typically expensive or you know that'll cause a catastrophic failure, but it's just something you should be aware of. So when you're looking to purchase one, if upon acceleration or deceleration, you're getting kind of a vibration or maybe even a knocking on the floorboards, if one's really bad, uh, don't let that sway you. Just understand that that's probably a bad center support bearing and you can get them, I think for 40 or $50 uh, anywhere, pretty much. Um, it's only an hour or two job to do. So it's not very bad, but I felt like it was something I should address in this video um, because you probably will run into it at some point owning an E30. Now let's talk about something that I see a lot of first timers get hung up on when it comes to E30s and it really doesn't matter. And that's the mileage on the car. So you can see on this one, it has done, according to the odometer, 163,821-ish miles. But I might surprise you to say that that's not actual mileage. I feel like a broken record, but once again, because of the age of the car, 
there is a failure point in the odometers on E30. You see, the little plastic gears inside tend to break pretty often, so most E30s that you're gonna find are not actual mileage. They will have either been repaired at some point and show somewhat accurate mileage, or some cars which broke 10 years ago, the owners didn't care, and the car could show 150, but really the car has 400,000 miles. And on this car, when I first purchased it, it did work, but it broke a couple years after that I bought the car. So I have probably put 1,000 or 2,000 miles on this car since the odometer gears have broken. So it still reflects somewhat accurate mileage. It's not like it's 180 or 190,000 miles and I'm really off by 30, 40,000. Um, but there are some cars that really could be an extreme difference of what is shown versus what is actual mileage on the car. But an important point should be, do not let mileage scare you when purchasing an E30. Honestly, these cars are built to last. You see so many with three, four, five hundred thousand 500,000 miles, and they operate flawlessly. Just as long as the basic maintenance has been done on them, if you see one with 200 or 250,000 miles on it, don't hesitate to buy it. Just as long as you see that the maintenance is at least somewhat up to date, the car will still be reliable. I ended up having to move this party indoors because it is Wisconsin in December and it's pretty cold outside and I'm lucky enough to have a heated garage. Remember, if you're cold, they're cold, bring them inside. I only had a couple more points to make before I want to wrap this whole thing up anyway. Another quick little thing that I'd like to talk about is on some E30s you might see for sale, they could have some sort of leaky fuel issue and a lot of people contribute that to a leaking fuel tank, rust holes, whatever. And a lot of times that's really not the case. If you look at the driver's side of the car and you would look right directly kind of under here, I can't get to it, um, but there's a little access panel in there, your fuel lines are in there, your fuel filter is in there. So what I would say is if you're looking at an E30 and it has a fuel leak issue and you aren't quite sure, definitely like look right down in there. You'll just go under the car, it'll be a screw to take out. You'll see all the rubber fuel lines in there. As I've been hammering home, the rubber's old, could be leaking. It's a really, really great place to at least take a look, start any search for a leaking fuel system. Now, if we move to the interior, of course, the age of the car, you're gonna find a lot of the plastic bits are, are broken. Um, on a lot of them, you're gonna see that this plastic leather material on the seats is gonna be completely cracked and broken. It's actually not too terrible on this one. Um, so just know that's pretty common on E30s or BMWs of this vintage. Um, something you'll really see a lot, but not on this one, are cracks in the dash. So I'm lucky I have a completely crack free dash, but that is something that's super, super, super common. I mean, it's very rare to see one without cracks. So once again, if, if you are looking at one, you see some cracks in the dash, that's common. That's probably gonna be most of them that you're looking at, unless you're looking at ones, you know, uh, in the 15 to $20,000 range that have been completely restored or in just absolutely fantastic shape. Another thing I'd like to talk about while we're on the subject of interior pieces is the actual window switches themselves. Now, there are E30s that you'll find where the windows, the electronic windows don't work. Um, so that's occasionally pretty common, I guess. Um, but 99 times out of 100, the culprit are those window switches right there. You can find them on eBay. Uh, you can find them brand new, used, whatever. They're relatively cheap. Um, they'll work across all E30s. Um, that was actually an issue on this car when I bought it and I rectified it for, I think it was like $20. Um, otherwise, usually uh, a ground wire Wire can be uh, to blame for that, either being rusty or whatever, that you can look right under the carpet in here. All right, so I think we've covered pretty much all of our bases. So what are the things that we should be concerned about when we're going to look for our first E30? Okay, so we wanna make sure that we have documentation of the work done from either the current or previous owner um, so that we know where the car is at in its maintenance schedule, where the cooling system has been done, where your timing belt is in its life cycle, as I've stated earlier in this video. You wanna take the car for a test drive and make sure that that suspension is tight and the engine's good. Um, if somebody is gonna tell you that you can't take it for a test drive or you must have cash in hand, just go ahead and skip even looking at that car because that buyer's whack and he's trying to hide something. And the things that you can physically look at 
when you're looking at purchasing a car is when you go and look at the car, check in those areas for rust. Also the jack points, I kind of miss talking about that, but the jack points are one of the other first areas to start going on a rusty car. So check your jack points, your aprons, uh, check your pinch well, all that, check under the hood in the spare wheel well. Make sure that's all good, rust free, or if it's a little rusty, that's okay. As we talked about, that can be repaired. Also, go ahead and feel around on the carpets on the floor and make sure it's not squishy and it's not wet. Um, also, if your floor pans are rusted and it's kind of being hidden a little bit, you'll be able to feel soft spots in the floor. Um, so that's a really good check overall that you should do. I really hope that this video was able to help you if you are going out and looking for your first E30. Thank you for watching the video. And if you liked what you saw, make sure to like and subscribe for future content. Also, go back and watch my video on E30 prices, what their current values are, and what it's going to do in the future. Peace.